Hey guys, welcome back to another weekly reading vlog. So this week I have quite a few plans, so I think I will kick off with letting you know what I plan on doing this week. So we are currently on Monday, the first day of the week, the first day of the vlog. This week I will actually only be working three days. I've been to work today, I have tomorrow, and then I have Wednesday and Thursday off, and then I will be back in on Friday. Now the reason that I have Wednesday and Thursday off is that I am going to the J. Christoph Dark Dawn event in Manchester. So I will be heading down to Manchester, I will be staying the night. My boyfriend, Curtis, is coming with me. When I am down there, I am going to be meeting Ryan, who is my best friend, and I will also be meeting up with Ashley from Frolic Through Fiction. But the plan at the moment is that Curtis will be heading off, doing his own thing, going back to the hotel or whatever, and I will be attending the event with Ryan and Ashley. I'm super excited for that. I am having a little bit of a dilemma at the minute, because I intended to get the rest of J. Kristoff's books that I didn't own before I went to the event. No, at the time that I booked the tickets, I didn't yet own Obsidio. I now have two copies of Obsidio, as you will know if you have seen the last two vlogs vlogs on my bookopoly or whatever I had Obsidio in. So the only remaining books that I do not own are the first two books in the Lotus War trilogy, which is the trilogy that I have read the first two books in and really loved. Jade from JJ Reads bought me the last book for my birthday. I am actually thinking now that I'm going to reread the first two books before I read the last one, not even because I've forgotten everything. I could definitely just read the third book and piece together what's happened that I may have forgotten from the first two books. But I just really love Jay Crystal, so I wouldn't actually mind rereading those books. But I do need to buy them and I thought you know what it's fine I will just Amazon prime them to myself. So I went on Amazon today to do that and for some reason they do not have the second book in paperback. They have the first book although it is full price which is strange for Amazon. It's £8.99. And then the second book, they only have in US paperback. So now I no longer know what I'm going to do for the sign-in on Wednesday. But I will be attending the sign-in. I may just order the first book. That series is very strange. It seems that they published the first two books in hardback in the US and the UK. And then they published the last book in hardback in the US that has a completely different cover to the UK set. And then never published the last book in that series. And now I'm being told that the second book is unavailable on Waterstones and on Amazon but I do know that it exists in paperback and I didn't want to buy the two hardbacks and then have to buy a paperback and now I can't buy paperbacks and I'm just really confused but hopefully Jay Kristoff will be back in the UK he is releasing the first book in his new vampire series next year I don't know if he'll do a full tour for that but he will be back at some point like guaranteed the man releases a lot of books so I assume he tours quite frequently that was a really long-winded way to say that I will be at the sign-in on Wednesday my other plans for the week it's not not really plans but the Sobathon which is a readathon that I'm co-hosting it will be already started by the time this vlog goes up but it is a readathon that is based around reading books that you think will make you cry that starts on Sunday the 8th so I think I will cut this vlog just a little bit short and we'll go Monday to Saturday and then the next vlog will run Sunday to Saturday so that the entirety of Sobathon is in one vlog I'm just I'm really focused on my mouth right now because I just received a comment on I'm not even sure what video it was I didn't check I think it could have been my unboxing yeah it was on my Illumicrate unboxing and somebody said that they really like my lips and my mouth and how my mouth moves and now I'm just like focusing on it like does it is it special my face is kind of not symmetrical I don't know if you've noticed but one side droops more than the other side and it really frustrates me but hey thank you I'm glad you like my mouth. So now for a reading update I am currently almost done with Oh, the Dark Descent of Elizabeth Frankenstein by Kirsten White. Let me shuffle a little bit. So this is a standalone young adult novel that follows Elizabeth Frankenstein, who I believe is a character that is very briefly mentioned in Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. I did read that book when I was 15. Haven't read it in a while, don't really remember it, and I kind of wish I had read it more recently going into this book. So the plot of this is that we follow Elizabeth, who was taken in by the Frankensteins in childhood to be a companion to Victor. It seems that Victor was doing some pretty weird shit even when he was quite a young child so they took on Elizabeth to sort of smooth out his edges and make him more presentable and stop him from doing all this weird shit that he was into. Now the way this book is told we are following a I think she's around 17 so it's a 17 year old Elizabeth who is heading with her friend Justine to find Victor who went to university a couple of years ago and hasn't written in months and essentially the reason that she's going to find him is that she believes that there may be some financial trouble with the Frankenstein the state and she does not want to be seen as excess baggage. She doesn't want Victor's dad to think that she isn't useful anymore, know that Victor's away and doesn't seem to need her 
because the thing that she is scared of above all else is heading back to that traumatic past that she had and not being able to live a comfortable life anymore because essentially she has not been adopted by the Frankensteins or anything she's just a ward so without a marriage or an adoption or anything she will have nothing. The way that this story is told is that we do have that present day timeline but then once in every chapter it will go back to an incident that happened in childhood and I have to admit I'm not enjoying that way of storytelling. It's kind of similar to the beginning of Nevernight how we will have like half a chapter of something that happened a few months ago and then half a chapter of what is actually happening right now except it doesn't stop it continues throughout the entire novel. Now I did tweet about this last night I was 90 pages in and I was asking people if this book gets any less boring and people were kind of like not really like a little bit but not really. Bobby from Bobby Reads Too Much said that around halfway it does pick up and pretty much bang on halfway it did get a little bit more exciting and things actually started happening. I'm just struggling to find the relevance of that first 150 pages. Like yes we are building up a backstory but I feel like I would have preferred this story have been told in a way that it was kind of like Elizabeth's life story. So instead of having those flashbacks every single chapter we just started off with her as a kid being adopted and then moved through her life. All of this stuff about him being at university university and her going to find him was just completely pointless. We did meet a character then that is no relevant where I'm up to which is like here but aside from that and learning a little bit about Victor and what Victor's doing and the lengths that Elizabeth will go to to protect him could have been done another way and I didn't really need this 150 pages of sheer boredom. Now one of my issues with this and I will gladly admit it is that I do not really like historical fiction. I can read classics because they were written in the time that they were represented most of the time obviously some are futuristic and some are historical even though they are classic but it seems that Kirsten White was trying to imitate Mary Shelley's writing in this. Now I can't say that for sure because it has been a very long time since I have read Frankenstein and I currently do not own my own copy to reference it and to check if I'm right but somebody on Twitter did say that that is what was going on and I already did suspect that that was the case. I just like I said couldn't say for sure. So it has this very historical feel. It's obviously set in I think late 1800s maybe and I just really don't like those settings. I don't like historical fiction that's set before 1900. It's just a personal preference. And you may ask, why are you reading this book then? Because obviously you're not going to like it. And technically I didn't choose to read this. This was my punishment book for Bacopoli and somebody said that this was the worst book that they'd ever read. I can confirm it's not even the worst book that I've read this year. But I'm definitely not enjoying it. Somebody on Twitter did also say why don't you do an effort yesterday and I replied that I didn't feel like I could because it was my punishment book and the point is to be punished. But after struggling for 150 pages the pace has definitely picked up and I am now on page 248 so I have like 30 pages of this left definitely going to finish it tonight. It has picked up over the second half. When I'm going through a book I'm obviously thinking about the story, the characters, everything that's going on but I also try to keep in mind what I think I may be rating this story and I really don't know for this book right now. It's going to be two or three stars because something that I just can't get out of my mind when I'm reading this and also when I'm thinking about rating it is the yes I may be slightly enjoying what is going on now but I just keep thinking why does this book need to exist? Like it doesn't feel like it says anything and I know that Kirsten White is well known for writing more feminist retellings like she did a Vlad the Impaler series where Vlad is a female. She essentially, this is a retelling of Frankenstein. I don't remember Frankenstein at all but the monster is in this so it's not like it's a prequel or anything. That's what I thought it was. I thought it was about Elizabeth Frankenstein but this seems to have everything with Victor Frankenstein and him making his monster just told from the perspective of Elizabeth and focusing what is going on with her. Now I will say that there is a little bit of a instance of what used to happen where women were put into sanatoriums for hysteria and people not believing women and choosing to believe men over women and that is obviously important. It's something that did happen. It's interesting to read about but aside from that I just don't know why this book was written. I don't know. It, it's just not, it's not making sense to me. It feels like a perspective that wasn't necessary. So like I said I am 40 pages away from the end of this, 30 to 40 pages. I was going to just briefly cover what this was about and then tell you my thoughts when I'd finished but it seems I've already covered what this is about and my thoughts so I guess when I come back I'll just tell you what I'm writing it and 
let you know whether I was satisfied with the end. So that's what I got for you so far. I'm going to go and film my Swabathon TBR now. As I said, that starts on Sunday. My vlog is technically supposed to be going up tomorrow, but I need to get this video filmed and I just posted my Rome vlog on Sunday. So I think I will post my Swabathon TBR tomorrow and then we have a little bit of a break between the vlogs. So I'm gonna go do that because I also want to post out some candle orders with me being away a couple of days this week. Currently 6.40, so I have quite a bit of time this evening so I'll go get my filming done and then do some candles do some editing and get in bed and finish this book hey okay, so it's a little bit later than when I left you it is 22 33 half 10 I did just finish the dark descent of Elizabeth Frankenstein I gave it two stars and then I went on Goodreads and when I finished a book I do go on Goodreads and I look at my friends reviews to see how the people that I know and who I'm familiar with through their channels etc have rated it and you know there's some pretty high ratings for this I just I just didn't I didn't like it so aside from everything that I said about it earlier I thought that the pacing was incredibly off I did mention that the first half is incredibly slow the middle section so after, when you get to around page 150 from there then onwards it's okay up until we get right near the end like the, the section that I've just read the last 40 50 pages it's just so rushed I mean you could argue that this is like a character study but with it being so character driven I expected to care more about the characters now Elizabeth is not the most likable character she's manipulative she spends all of her life manipulating people all she cares about is how other people receive her and so she's not necessarily supposed to be likable but then she's also taking on Victor Frankenstein, who is the real monster of Frankenstein. So you would expect me to like her a little bit more. And I didn't dislike her. I didn't dislike anybody in this. I don't think I liked anybody either. I was just really ambivalent throughout the entirety of this book. And then the only other thing I really have to say about it is that I predicted everything that happened in here. There was one plot twist that I didn't predict that was revolving around Victor's father. I guess like the big plot twist and... And yeah, it was predictable. It, it was predictable. The pacing was off. I just, I just didn't like it. Two stars. Not, not impressed. Now that I finally finished that, I can move on to the book that I've actually wanted to read for quite some time. I'm just going to put my bookmark in. And that will be God's Grave by J. Kristoff. Now, as I said, I'm going to the sign-in on Wednesday. I wanted to have this finished before the sign-in. But that ain't gonna happen now because I remember that the beginning of this is quite slow as well. So I'm sad about that because I'm gonna be a little bit delayed reading Dark Dawn. But I am so excited to get to this since my reread of Nevernight. Like every time I read a Gia Kristoff book, even rereading them, I just love them more and more and more. And so God's Grave, if you don't know, is the second book in the Nevernight Chronicle, which is the Nevernight series. And it follows 16-year-old Mia who witnesses the hanging of her father and the imprisonment of her mother. She runs away and she escapes from the people that do this to them and is taken in by an old man who then prepares her for entry to the Red Church, which is an exclusive school of assassins and the reason that she is there is that she wants to take revenge on the people who broke up her family. Now what I will say is that Jay Kristoff has been retweeting hate reviews kind of thing as promotion for Dark Dawn so when people have been saying nasty things about his books he has like made them into graphics and that's part of the Dark Dawn promo and one of them was that um it said something like I don't know how you managed to make money off a like knockoff Arya Stark fan fiction and you know Mia is a little bit like Arya Stark and I didn't notice until I read that hate tweet. Obviously this story is all its own but you could imagine it like in a distant world slightly related like an alternate Arya Stark story so when she goes off to the house of many faces that's like the red church kind of deal if you get what I mean that's not even relevant I really need to stop with tangents especially since this is my second update of the day but Anyway, this isn't on my Bookopoly TBR. This is still left over from last month. Need to read it for Dark Dawn. I also have a live show for Dark Dawn on the 28th of September. So I need to reread this and read Dark Dawn. I may be reading them back to back, which I haven't done with books in this series in forever, but I wouldn't mind because I'm so hooked right now and I was so desperate to pick this up directly after Nevernight. So maybe it's a good thing that I'll be able to pick up Dark Dawn directly after God's Grave, but then when I get the last book in a series, I always put it off. Like I didn't read Kingdom of Ash by Sarah J Maas for like two months after the book was released because I was scared of it. So we'll see how I go with God's Grave. Like I said, it is 10.30. 
Um, I'm gonna start this tonight. I need to erase the memory of the Dark Descent of Elizabeth Frankenstein from my brain. So I will start God's Grave and check in with you. Probably not tomorrow now that I filled you in on finishing that and that I'm starting this, but I will check in with you at some point and let you know my progress. Definitely Wednesday because we have the event on Wednesday. So um, if nothing else, I'll definitely see you on Wednesday. Hey guys, I know I said I wasn't gonna check in today because I had only just started God's Grave. I am only 25 pages into God's Grave, so I don't really have anything to say. I've literally read the catch up portion at the beginning where it tells you who all the characters are and where they're up to and two chapters. So I have nothing to update on that. But I have received this today. Now this is from Waterstones, which means could really only be one thing. Well, it couldn't, but the other package I ordered is bigger, so I'm scared. Okay, are we ready? I'm not even gonna tell you what I think this is because we all know. logged on holy moly okay so this is in my hands this is actually in my hands it's the black spray edition that is signed by jay himself as far as i'm aware this is not a first edition but it is still dogged on in all her glory should i just read the last page should i just put myself out of my misery and read the last page of this i would never do that but Oh my god, I'm so excited. I'm so excited, guys. Right. So you guys know that I have just started my reread of God's Grave. Sadly, cannot pick this up yet. I will be getting another copy at the event tomorrow because I wasn't sure that this would arrive in time for me to go to the event. So I am going to take this one with me, but I'm going to be letting Ashley from Frolic Through Fiction borrow it because she has not bought the book. She wants to wait for the paperback release, but she can't wait to read it. So I have two identical copies. So I was like, you know what? You can borrow my spare. So I guess my plan with this is that I'm going to finish God's Grave as quick as I possibly can can at this rate i think i'm only going to be finishing it at the weekend but my shelf love crate has just arrived which means there will be another weekend vlog soon this weekend is not ideal but neither is next weekend and i have to do it on one of them so i think what i'm gonna do is if i finish god's grave on like friday so it's right by the weekend and i won't have started dark dawn yet then i will do my weekend shelf love crate vlog and then if i finish god's grave like tomorrow or thursday i'm gonna go straight into dark dawn and do the shelf of crate after Sobathon. So that is my plan so far. I can't believe I have this in my hands. I've been waiting on this for two years. Look at the maps. I'm dying. I'm dying inside. Oh my god, what's this? What's this? I have no idea what that is. Oh my god. I just read some of it. Oh. Right, so I'm gonna go. Um, I need to start inputting the footage and editing last week's vlog. I have dart on. I have dart on. Just outside Waterstones, there's the back of Ashley. There she is. Um, so we just had food at Bella Italia and we're just having our food and then Jay Kristoff walks in and we're all just like a little bit shook and then he's saluting me. Um, and then he was like directly in my line of sight so I kind of had to stare at him. The, well, I didn't have to stare at him. I did stare at him um, the entire time. So now I'm a little bit shook, but the sign-in is in like 10 minutes, I think. So we're gonna go ahead in and hope that we're not on the back because we dawdled staring at Jay Kristoff. 
happened. Well, so he's gonna be late anyway, so like, so are we. Yeah. Because we followed him, basically. Well, he followed us. Yeah. And now he's gonna follow us again into Waterstones. Yeah, so we're not the stalkers yet. True. Fine. True, it's Diego. <laughs> Um, so I will probably get some footage of the sign-in and I'll check in with you guys later. They, they take a form that represents the innermost psyches of the people that they glom onto. And yeah, a black cat seemed kind of suitable to me. I understand why we had this one working now. <laughs> <laughs> the people who run the store know more than me. As you can probably tell the signing last night was really great we had the talk and then there was the signing J. Christoph came into Bella Italia um, that was really cool and in the talk he was talking about things like what kind of a writer he is and he spoke a little bit about the new vampire series he has coming next year which I'm very excited for I've been really excited for that since it was announced even though like obviously I haven't read Dark Dawn and Dark Dawn wasn't released at that point I'm just ridiculously excited for this vampire book for some reason I mean I haven't been into vampires for a long time but I'm like so excited he also told like a few little stories for example about the time that he nearly died in Venice and Jay Kristoff you know he's just a super cool guy he's really really cool he's my favorite author so I definitely accomplished a life achievement last night the signing afterwards took forever there were so many people there and during the talk we were right at the back of the room so we were the last out of the room which meant we were at the back of the signing line I mean I had a like two and a half hour drive home so I could have gone to the front but I always feel really bad when I do that and obviously as you guys know I went with Ashley and Ryan who didn't have a lot longer journey so I felt really bad pushing in with my like eight books and being like hey I gotta go home so we just waited because with me having a car it's not like a huge deal having to wait and then drive back but by the time we got to CJ it was like way past 10 30 I think we got Ashley back to the train station at around 11 20 and I got home at 2 a.m so it was a long ass day but I did really enjoy myself obviously waiting in such a long line is really tedious but you know Jay Kristoff he's a big author a lot of people want to see him and you just gotta wait you know there's only one Jay Kristoff there's nothing they can really do to hurry up the lines. It was also really great to meet Ashley I think we're probably gonna meet up again at some point she doesn't live that far away from me Sheffield is around an hour and 40 minutes drive from me and obviously with Ashley living in a big city she has like access to trains and things so we will probably meet up again at some point I don't have many photos of Ashley I didn't take a picture on my camera I realized I was looking through my phone and we took like a selfie on my on my phone but the quality was shit and I have a camera and we could have taken a selfie on that but we didn't but obviously I did get a picture with Jay from the sign-in so I will put that here for you guys so you can see it it's actually a really good photo I hate it when I go to things like sign-ins and you get like one chance for a picture and I'm like but what if I look terrible but um yeah it actually turned out pretty well so I'm happy about that and I also got Jay to do his little Mr. Kindly doodle in my never night I don't have it with me it's in the other room and I can't be bothered getting it but he did do his little Mr. Kindly drawing which I absolutely love I did ask for it specifically because um I wanted the little Mr. Kindly but it was cool of him to draw it for me so I have a couple of things for you guys now just a little bit of a reading update I'm still reading God's Grave I'm not very far in at all I read like 15 pages on Tuesday and like 10 pages yesterday but today I have been doing some reading I have done a lot of laundry today as you can see sports bra like slouchy top I'm having a chill day I've done some laundry and I've made some candles and now I'm just gonna read I need to finish editing last week's vlog because it's supposed to go up today but I ended up having a Netflix binge on Tuesday night I finally started watching season two of the OA so I was up till 2 a.m. watching TV instead of editing but that video is half edited so I just need to edit like the last half an hour tonight and then that will be up tomorrow it's like it's no big deal it's fine I'm being chill about it even though you guys know how I feel about my upload schedule so anyway God's Grave I've been reading quite a bit today I'm on page 76 I want to have this finished by Saturday because Sobathon starts on Sunday which means that I want to get to at least page 150 today 
just to keep me on track for that. I'll just move this over to the side because it's easier. So with this, I'm obviously enjoying it a lot. I'm only on like chapter eight. I haven't read like a whole ton, but I do have like a non-spoilery kind of theory that I wanted to share with you guys. Obviously, I've only just got Dark Dawn. I haven't read it yet. I did open it to the first page and then started reading and I was like, no, don't. Oh, I, I did that in the vlog, so you saw that. On both the US edition of Dark Dawn and the UK edition, obviously like the UK editions, we have all of these things like there's Mr. Kindly and this is Eclipse. On both the US and UK edition of Dark Dawn, we have Mr. Kindly and I'm not sure if Eclipse is on the UK one, but there's Mr. Kindly and Eclipse on the US one and there's also a snake and then on the UK edition coming out of the bottom of Mr. Kindly, we have a snake as well. I was always wondering who that was and I was like, is, is the Shadow Passengers? But in God's Grave, we do have a character who has an alter ego and the alter ego is called the Viper. Now that's like a big mystery through God's Grave. I'm not sure how far in it is before it's revealed. You find out eventually who the Viper is, but then I was wondering whether the snake on US and UK Dark Dawn represents the Viper because this snake has been a huge mystery to me. I mean, it could be really obvious in God's Grave, but it's just been that long since I read it. So that's just the theory that I wanted to share with you. I think that the snake might be the Viper. Please don't spoil me in the comments. Don't say anything about it because I haven't started Dark Dawn or anything yet and I'm still like rereading God's Grave but that's just my thoughts on who that may be and why there is a snake on both covers. As I said I want to get to page 150 of this today. I'm going to do a little bit more reading when I've done this update. The other thing I have for you is that I have some more bookish mail. This is again that's something else I've ordered for myself from Waterstones again as well and as I said to you on Tuesday this is the thing that I thought Dark Dawn may have been but it's a much bigger parcel. Now there are two books in here but they are both the same because I pre-ordered something for myself and for my friend. But I'll just show you one because they're literally both the same. But I pre-ordered myself, I did say maybe in my Bookopoly TBR that I was getting this, but I pre-ordered myself the collector's edition of Crooked Kingdom by Lee Bardugo, which I will be buddy reading this month with Jade from JD Ray Reads. I still need to get Six of Crows off Amazon because for some reason it wasn't on stock on Waterstones online and none of the stores that I could easily get to had it in stock for me to click and collect. So... The collector's edition has the map of Ketterdam. It also has like this added extra bit and that's the title page and I'm pretty sure somewhere in here there is some character art. Yeah, it's right at the back. So at the back of this we have character art from Mono Lime Art who I know works a lot with Illumicrate. I have those collectible coins in the Illumicrate boxes are done by Mono Lime Art. So you have Kaz, Inej, Nina, Matthias, Jesper, Wylan and finally Kue Yulbo who is introduced like quite late on. I didn't even know he was really a part of Crooked Kingdom but there we have it. So I did get this. I'm gonna have like a huge book haul this month guys. I don't know where all these books are coming from but there will be a book haul at the end of this month with quite a few books in it. So that's all I got for you now. I'm gonna go read some more God's Grave and I think I'll be wrapping up this vlog on Saturday like I said so I have a full stop-a-thon vlog but we still have two days of this vlog left so we'll see what happens with the rest of this week. quick update to tell you a couple of things the first thing is that never style your hair with hairspray come home put it in a bun and then don't take it out for three days because this is the result my hair is very big it's very crazy and I'm trying to get ready to film my August wrap up and I don't know what to do with it like I was gonna separate the top as I normally do with my hairs like desperately in need of washing and put a bun on top but I can't separate it because it just takes everything with it so um I gotta fix this issue I'm having the second thing is that I don't have any prototypes to show you right now but I have released my two limited edition fall candles you can find them at the link in my description box at graceandhoney.net and I've also released two new candles one never themed and one illuminate themed the nevernight one is called pale daughter and the illuminate one is called catalyst in chaos they are all available right now if you would like any they're in my description box that is not the point of me telling you this the point is the author of the furies katie lowe you may remember it's like a dark academia with some like witchcraft vibes i always refer to it as the craft of british well the author katie lowe just purchased two of my candles and I'm shook. I'm shook about it. Like, she purchased the candles, followed me on Twitter, and then tweeted me. So she had no idea that I 
really like her book and that's why I follow her on Twitter. I have no idea how she found me but um, yeah she just purchased a couple of candles and I, I'm very happy about that and I'm also a little bit shook it's the first time anything like this has happened to me. I was going to do a reading update after I'd finished my wrap up but we may as well do it now. I'm still reading God's Grave, I'm nearly done. I am going to be done tonight, it's very exciting. I'm on page 364 of 420. I'm enjoying it very much. I'm not going to tell you too many thoughts now because I am ending this vlog today. I kind of just want to finish God's Grave before I do so. So the next clip you will see will probably be my full thoughts on God's Grave without spoilers, which won't be many thoughts at all but I am enjoying it on my reread. I still don't think it's as good as Nevernight. I didn't the first time I read it. I still don't know but I still absolutely love it so you know it's just a minor thing that doesn't really matter that I don't think it's as good as Nevernight but I have a cup of tea that is probably very nearly cold now. I have a really bad hair problem to fix that I really don't fucking know what to do with. I have a wrap-up to film, a book to finish, and then as soon as I finish filming that goddamn wrap up, I'm going to wash my hair so that it, it doesn't look like this. So I'm going to go get on with that stuff. Just thought I would share my current bad hair day or bad hair evening, I guess, with you. And also the shook of news that Katie Lowe purchased some candles from me. So that's how my Saturday's going. And I'll let you know when I finish God's Grave. Why did I do that? That was weird. Mm. they're so good how do I turn it off when I don't have two hands let's do this again hey guys so as you can probably tell it is not a Saturday evening anymore but I am here now to wrap up this vlog I did manage to finish God's Grave last night and I finished it at like it was nearly 2 a.m. so I just kind of went to bed I've been intending to fill you in all day and wrap up this vlog but I've had a productive day you know so last night as I said finished God's Grave at five stars, really loved it. I don't think that this is as good as Nevernight. One reason is that I really like the Assassin's School trope, which we have in Nevernight. The thing about God's Grave is that it kind of repeats the Assassin's School kind of thing, but with a gladiator scenario. So I won't spoil this and tell you what it's about really, because it's a sequel. Essentially in this book Mia finds herself in a situation where she is surrounded by gladiators. We have like arena events and things like that in here. So it is kind of similar to Nevernight in the structure just with a different environment and as far as tropes go I definitely prefer the assassin school trope. So with this being kind of similar but not as appealing in my eyes as the assassin school thing I don't think it is as good as Nevernight. It is still five stars because the thing that I really like about this honestly I've said this a million times but Jay Chris off he's just a really cool guy and I just like him as a person and also as an author I like his writing style. I think that his voice and his sarcasm and his nature does come through in his writing and I like how he creates these hopeless scenarios with these beaten down characters that don't really have all that much to live for. It is kind of the same with his other adult series Lotus War. We have these strong female characters that have been beaten down by whatever it is dependent on the series and they kind of have this one thing to cling on to and this one driving purpose that drives them forward. The ending of this book is epic like no matter that I think that Nevernight is slightly better the ending of this is epic. We find out like 5,000 things in the last like 20 pages but there's just one moment and if you've read this you'll know what it is but the imagery is just so fucking beautiful and it happens in my head like it's a movie in slow motion where Mia just executes this like beautiful finale to the book and it's all just really dramatic and then we have like plot revelations going on everywhere else as well and then the Dicta Ultima at the end. If you don't know, the is it Dicta or Dictus? Let me look. Dicta Ultima is kind of like the prologues and the epilogues of these books where we have the narrator who is telling you the story, kind of introducing you to what's going to happen in the prologue and then wrapping things up in the epilogue and that was just like... <laughs> really dramatic but also kind of really sad and kind of depressing and I was just a little bit like I, I, I'm excited for Dark Dawn now obviously I am 
but I'm also kind of depressed and really dreading it. So that's what I thought of God's Grave. Five stars. Love Jake Kristoff. Love this book. So that's all I have for this week's vlog. I'm going to be starting the next one straight away because we are in Subathon now. We are in day one of Subathon. I have already done some reading, but you will find out all about that in next week's vlog. But thank you very much for watching this one. If you liked it, then please don't forget to like it and subscribe if you want to. But I will catch you guys next week. Bye. Oh, you bite your friend like chocolate. You say you're a go, and nobody knows. With guns in under our petticoats. We're never gonna quit it, no, we're never gonna quit it, no.